Strongyloides is a human parasitic nematode which is poorly understood outside of a clinical context. This paper identifies gaps within the literature with particular emphasis on gaps that are hindering environmental control of strongyloides. Several key limitations hinder our understanding of human strongyloidiasis. The prevalence and distribution of strongyloides is unclear. An estimate of 100 to 370 million people infected worldwide has been proposed. However, the inaccuracy of diagnosis, unreliability of prevalence mapping, and the fact that strongyloidiasis remains a neglected disease suggests that the higher figure of over 300 million cases is likely to be a more accurate estimate. The complexity of strongyloides life cycle means that laboratory cultures cannot be maintained outside of a host. This currently limits the range of laboratory-based research which is vital to controlling strongyloides through environmental alteration or treatment. Successful clinical treatment with anti-helminthic drugs has meant that controlling strongyloides through environmental control rather than clinical intervention has been largely overlooked. These control measures may encompass alteration of the soil environment through physical means such as desiccation or removal of nutrients, or through chemical or biological agents such as the addition of nematophagous fungi capable of controlling the nematode in the environment. Repeated anti-helminthic treatment of individuals with recurrent strongylodiasis has not been observed to result in the selection of resistant strains. However, this has not been explicitly demonstrated and relying on such assumptions in the long term may prove to be short-sighted. It is ultimately naive to assume that continued administration of anti-helminthics will be without any negative long-term effects. In Australia, strongylodiasis primarily affects indigenous communities, including communities from arid central Australia. This suggests that the range of strongyloides extends beyond the reported tropical subtropical boundary. Localized conditions that might result in this extended boundary include accumulation of moisture within housing due to malfunctioning health hardware inside and outside the house and the presence of dog fecal matter in or around housing areas.